ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of assemble my name is high ruler and today is going to be a relatively short uh episode of assemble guys um i'm kind of sick i'm not feeling too well um so i'm gonna try and take it easy on this i'm not gonna do a lot of talking um especially because i got like a cough going on so who knows guys who knows so um it's just right off the bat my apologies um if this episode is like super short and it's not super in depth it just bear with me um and hopefully next week we come back uh with a stronger episode so um yeah so this week there was a few things that happened obviously the big thing that happened was patch 1.3 um it definitely fixed some issues it definitely didn't fix some issues and according to some parts of the community it definitely contributed to some issues as well so um all in all guys uh if you guys want to see like a, a very detailed breakdown of the the patch notes and kind of my thoughts um you can go to assemble uh cast or assemble podcast on youtube sorry and there's a patch notes video there um all in all uh just kind of as like a high level overview of what i thought about the patch i mean it's a good step in the right direction obviously matchmaking now works i'm finding three man teams instead of uh you know maybe one other person I still haven't found a, a four main squad based off matchmaking yet, but, um, you know, I, it, it's better. It's better. Um, they, they fixed a lot of things in terms of, uh, combat, UI, art, clipping. Like there's a lot of fixes there. I highly suggest that you, you guys can like read the patch notes yourselves or go to the video to watch. Um, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, people just need to understand that unfortunately for whatever reason this game was very much so launched in a buggy state and because of that it's not going to be the greatest right now um and, I, and i'm seeing people like very 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 upset understandable i'm seeing people who are taking a break from the game very understandable what i'm what i'm what i'm seeing this kind of over the line personally is these people who are like insulting the devs or insulting the game like it, it you know like if you want to sit there and say like you know what like the game didn't launch in the greatest state i'll be back in a month when you know kate bishop is out and i'll come back then and see where the game is that's totally cool man it's totally fine you know i would actually highly suggest that for a lot of people right now um but there's a lot of comments that i've seen throughout the community that it's just like you know, it's it's just one of those things where, you know, people need to take a step back. Obviously, we don't want anyone to feel like they didn't get their money's worth. Um, and if you, if you definitely feel like you didn't get your money's worth, then uh, I'm super sorry. And, and please, like, try to do your best to like, get a refund, maybe. Um, otherwise, just, like, sit tight. You know, the game is playable now. Um, I know for some people, they, they couldn't play the game. I still know for some people that they do have issues with regards to some game breaking bugs. Um, all I can say is like report those ASAP and uh, hopefully Crystal Dynamics can kind of figure those out. Um, but I mean, if you have the ability to like play the game and have fun, I mean, by all means, the game, the game is fun, you know, and when you match make with uh, other people and you get a full squad going and you're all kind of running around and beating things up, like, it's super good, man. It's 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 a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I kind of always talk about the community at large on Assemble. And um, it seems like, once again, I'm seeing people not totally understand what kind of game this is. Um, this is a looter. This is repeatable content. This is, unfortunately, and we do have to expect more and demand more as consumers. But these games never really launch with the most content right out of, out of the gate. So unfortunately, this means only a few different villains, only a few different bosses, only a few different maps. And and I'm going to get into the maps in a second here. Um, but I think the, leading up to the launch of this game, it was very, and especially during the beta, it was very obvious what kind of game this was going to be, right? This was going to be a repeatable content. And even in the beta, you could see how how many repeats of the same map layout there were right like that right there should have been like oh wow this is like pretty similar each and every time like maybe it, this may not be the game for me you know um even i mentioned that in the beta like 
all these uh, mission chains and mission structures with, uh, you know, other than the Snowy Tundra one, they're all the same, right? And um, obviously, I still bought the game. I still have a lot of fun with the game. But I'm seeing people now who either weren't paying attention or maybe, you know, didn't understand what the game was. Super upset that the game is um, a looter with some grind to it. Um, and they don't really understand why. You know, they don't understand what the point of that is. I had someone, I read a comment today, for example, um, who said, hopefully they put out a war zone soon so I can find out why I'm grinding all these, um, sorry, not a war zone, a war table, so I can find out why I'm grinding all this gear for. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, you're grinding the gear to get power. You're grinding power to do harder level stuff and new stuff that they're going to bring out, right? Regardless of like when that's going to come out you know we know something's going to come out between now and the end of october um the whole point of grinding gear and grinding power is to do harder content and then new content so it, it just it's just comments like those that really kind of irk me because like there are so many legitimate criticisms that we, we can give the game and i'm going to give some right now but when people kind of make comments like that i'm like do you guys know what kind of game you're playing you know focus on the things that are like you can you can really zone in on right um levels are too much the same there's too many of the same kind of enemies you're facing there's too little bosses um you know like loot loot isn't the greatest right stuff like that you can you can then break down specifically into specific specific issues and then kind of highlight you know maybe some ways to tackle that or whatever right but saying uh yeah could you give me a, a roadmap so i can figure out why i'm uh grinding all this gear like come on guys like really come on man it just doesn't make sense to me you know like if you didn't know that this was going to be a looter when you bought it i'm sorry like you should have been paying attention to the beta to the news to everyone ha like harping on this game for being a game as a service right like this game had got so much shit before it even came out for being a game as a service. And if you didn't pay attention to that, and then you buy it, and then you play through the story, and then you get to the end, and you're like, wait, why am I grinding all this gear? Like, Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not, uh, you know, it is what it is, I guess. So uh, just kind of my own personal kind of feeling towards kind of some of the things I've seen. Um, for the most part, I think a lot of the community has been pretty good about their complaints and suggestions and everything to do with that. I think the community as well as Crystal Dynamics know that the game isn't in the greatest state. Um, and I think one of the things that is going to be reassuring to players is going to be a roadmap, uh, just kind of a, a six month roadmap, even just kind of, Hey guys, like while we have a small team, fixing bugs we also have a, a team working on some content and um here's kind of what to expect between now and the you know say march or april next year right just enough time to kind of get every all those content stuff out you know you, you kind of end the roadmap with spider-man but say hey this is just our first roadmap this is just kind of breaking it down for you guys so you guys have an understanding of like where we're going within our next first six months here and I think that would be good. Um, and I think definitely it would give players a chance to, who are maybe not enjoying the game in the current state. Be like, okay, I'm not enjoying this. So let me put it on the back burner. And then I'll come back around November, December, January. When all this new content's coming out, I'm going to come back. And, you know, hopefully the game's in a better state. Hopefully there's some new characters that I want to try. And uh, I'll be back around then. And I think that's a good way to tackle it. Um, you definitely want to reassure current players that we're, you're going to fix all the bugs, but you also want to reassure them too, that, you know, there's going to be new stuff to do. So you're not just grinding the same four bosses or, you know, grinding the same three vaults or, you know, stuff like that. So, um, they definitely have their, their hands tied. Um, but I have faith in them. I have faith in crystal dynamics, man. Um, their communication has been good um their their kind of way they've been tackling bugs and everything like that has been good um i don't really have a lot of things bad to say other than the game probably launched too early um but you know what man they're they're working on it they're doing their best and uh i it's 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 something it's not something where they're like going radio silent on us like bioware did with anthem for example 
Um, communications are open. Communications are ongoing. And they're patching. They're putting out, you know, fixes. And uh, we'll kind of see where it goes from here, right? So, you know. You can, only, you can only expect so much in such a little time, I guess, right? So my word of advice to the community is just be patient. Um, you know, there's lots of games out there. If you need, you know, not every game needs to take up every gaming moment of your life. You know, if, if a game is not fun for you, take a step back, reassess, come back at a later time. You know, we expect games to be, um, to be these things that we throw ourselves into and we we expect the game to take over our life and i'm not saying everyone but i'm saying like sometimes with these games the community for these games kind of expect these games to um completely dominate their gaming time right and when they don't or when there's not enough content to do that players get pissy so just i would just highly suggest that people take a step back and um just reassess and come back man that's all that's all it is that's all it is man and uh you'll be a lot happier when you do so trust me i've had to do that with some games before and uh you know you feel better you feel better when you do something like that so Whew, that was a lot man that was a lot of speaking there um i wasn't expecting to do that much speaking but uh let me tell you lungs whew, I, I i i swear i haven't been feeling that great guys so uh that was a lot for me. Uh, I've been bedridden for the past like few days here, and uh, it's been not a great time. So uh, I'm kind of proud of myself for that one. All right. So let's kind of jump into some new content here that did come out with patch 1.3. So what we got this week was the Mega Hive. And the Mega Hive, I guess I can let them explain it because uh, this is probably going to be better than how I would explain it. So let's just kind of read this and then I'll talk about my personal kind of opinions and thoughts on it. Um, cause I beat it. I, I beat it and I finished it off stream. Um, cause I didn't think it was going to be the most enjoyable content that there is that the game provides. And I was kind of correct, but before I jump into like my personal experiences with it, um, I'm going to just kind of talk. I'm just going to read what they have on their, uh, their blog and, uh, we'll kind of go from there. So, Mega Hive. New this week, let's welcome the Mega Hive. After completing the reigning supreme mission chain, you'll be able to access the Gauntlet of Heroes on the War Table. Mega Hives are a single player chain of eight missions that test your team's might. There's a caveat. However, only heroes in your roster with the power level of 140 can participate. Each week, you have a shot at completing the Mega Hive mission chain. While you'll be joined by companion AI in each of the eight missions, once a hero's life hits zero, you must choose a new qualifying hero to press forward with. If you fail due to all the valid heroes being defeated, progress will reset so you can try again. As you progress through the Mega Hive, rewards start as a basic resource. Rewards start as basic resources. A small chance of cosmetic drop. Wow. Okay, so it's not just me. They actually just can't write. Okay, they just can't write. My English is still good. Woo. All right. The more missions you survive, the resource drops increase, as does your chance at gear and minor artifacts. As you near the final mission, you'll see artifacts more often and increased chance of patterns slash nameplates. When you complete all eight Mega Hive missions, you'll be rewarded with exclusive goodies reserved for the, this gauntlet, including a significant amount of rare resources. The Mega Hive mission chain is then removed from the war table until the weekly ref refresh when you can run it again with new modifiers for additional opportunities at the exclusive rewards. All right. So let me let me kind of talk to you guys about the Mega Hive. Um, <clears throat> let me just kind of figure out how I want to start this. So right away, it is the same basic layout of all the aim interiors that we've been running since the game launched. So if you're going in there expecting new new layouts or new mission layouts or, you know, new kind of objectives within this, I would say no, um, not even temper, temper your expectations, just straight up no. Um, you're going in there, you're running the same things that we've been running for the past three weeks. Um, so right there, just be very mindful of that. Um, it is it is OK, but it's not the most interesting content. It is 45 levels of the same things that we've been doing. 
Um, no, eight times five is 40, right? Yeah, it's 40. I say 45? Oh my goodness. I need to get back to work, man. I need to start doing something with my brain. Um, it, it's, but, you know, kind of, I digress because it's basically, um, I don't think it's worth it. So I completed it yesterday on my Captain America. I did it in one character. Um, and basically I didn't, I mean, I don't rem remember getting a lot of rare resources or like the amount I got. It could have been significant. It could have not been, but, uh, I didn't walk away with that many gear drops or anything that was very useful. I mean, I got a bunch of blues and purples, but I didn't get anything for completing it. There was like nothing good after that came with it. Um, so if you're going in there and trying to rush through these all these levels in hopes that you're going to get like something super good, that's where I'll say temper your expectations because, uh, you know, I've seen people on the on the subreddit, for example, kind of echo what I'm what I'm saying right now. Um, they did it, and they didn't really get a lot out of it. So maybe rewards aren't really um, tuned correctly for it. Maybe they need to fix that somehow. Um, all I'll say right now is it's probably not the greatest content to run. Um, if you want to run run, you know, the evil reborn, the heroic one, run vaults, run your villain sectors. If you're really super bored and you have nothing else you want to do, you know, maybe do one of these and then come back to it and do another one. Um, just be mindful of the fact that, like, if your guy dies, that's it. And um, I'm pretty sure, say, for example, you get to the fourth stage out of eight. And if you die, I think that will go all the way back to one. I'm, I never tested that out because I'm too chicken to do it, but I think that is how that works. So I would say definitely be careful and definitely play smart. I understand there's a lot of kind of crazy stuff that can happen in a game um, with all the AI enemies, you know, freezing you, the missiles and everything. Um, all I will say is just play smart, play slow. Uh, if you feel like you're overwhelmed, just, you know, readjust, remove. Don't, don't take a fight that you don't think you can win um especially as you get to like the seventh stage and the eighth stage like just just play don't play to rush through it just play to you know make it through it and i think when you do that you'll be okay so but would i suggest running this right now not a chance man oh my god not a chance um villain sectors elite hive um vaults and uh that right there is what i would be running man um the elite heroic hive has a chance to drop an exotic at the end i believe um and and, and speaking of exotics too while i'm on that kind of mindset 1.3 also fix exotics so let me go to the patch notes here and you know if you guys remember i was really harping on exotics for how bad they were and it seemed like they have now fixed exotics to the point where they're, they have better stat rules than legendaries, but now they need to make exotics that have um, like game-breaking features to them. Something more to these because um, right now exotics are good, but we want exotics to be great, right? So let's let's just read the patch notes here for everyone, and then we can kind of move on. So exotics, exotic gear now have higher attribu attribute points. Power level 130 plus exotic gear now always has the better attributes than other rarities. So <clears throat> they definitely fixed the issue there. I definitely appreciate them fixing that issue and definitely making exotic gear actually mean something. Um, so now if you guys get an exotic, it will be better than a legendary. Um, whereas before you were taking the, you're, you, you were kind of rolling whether it was going to be better or not. So I still personally haven't found an exotic yet. Um, hopefully I will. But uh, have no fear, guys, that your exotics will have better stat rolls than the legendaries that come before it. So um, all in all, to kind of round out the patch, um, patch was good. They need to do more. They need to do better. Um, there are still some issues that, you know, are popping up. But... It, it, it they definitely will tackle those report them let them know and they will get around to fixing them um that's all i can say for that 
In terms of the Mega Hive, um, don't run it, guys. Do something else. If you're super bored, it's a single player only thing. You got to remember that too. So um, you can't take your boys into that with you. You got to do that super solo. Um, so, I mean, if none of your friends are on that you play this game with and you got nothing else to do, go at it, go for it. But, uh, you know, I, I still think there's better things to do with your time. I'll run it each week just to get it done and over with and see what we get. But in terms of, you know, the best use of your time, there's so many better uses of your time in this game. So, um, I would probably rate the mega hive like a two out of 10, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it's not the greatest thing ever. It's it's really not it it you know what it helped me you know get me to uh, to 150 for Captain America when I ran it that first night on stream that first floor, um, but uh, it's it's not the greatest thing man it's really not so that's all I really have to say about that so um, I wanted to end this week's episode guys with talking a little bit about uh, Phil street it was streaming with Eric I believe. Arix. Um so basically I believe Arix Gaming is a streamer who streams some uh, Marvel Avengers. I'm not too familiar with them. Seems like their last stream was two days ago and then before that was sixteen days ago. Um seventy two point three K followers. I imagine they're probably pretty big on YouTube, which is yeah. 1.13 million subscribers so um looks like this is definitely someone who does a lot more youtube content than streaming content i guess they probably had something set up together for phil to go on their stream um so i so i just want to say special shout out to be more breezy um this is someone that i follow on twitter he follows me back on twitter the dude's super like in depth with a lot of the games he covers shout out to him um if you guys are interested in ghost recon at all that's kind of where i was introduced to him um, the dude definitely does his work and does his homework when it comes to the games he follows. Um, shout out to him, man. I, I, you know what? Just for, I'm going to drop his uh, stuff in my in the descri description down below just because um, I really like his stuff, man. I really like his stuff a lot. So um, shout out to him for kind of summarizing a lot of the stuff that was said. So I'm just going to kind of read this and give my own thoughts on this. So let's let's kind of see what we got. So this was from two days ago. So this was Friday afternoon, and just so we're clear, the patch dropped Friday night. So there are going to be some things in here about the patch, but the patch ended up dropping a few hours later. So let's uh, let's get into it. So patch notes will come soon, and then he types LOL with over 1K fixes. Now, obviously, the patch notes didn't have 1,000 things listed, um, but I it's not hard to think that there probably were 1,000 things that were fixed. This would include matchmaking fixes, bug fixes, fixes, and mission fixes, which, yep, there were. So then they're talking a little bit about Secret Labs, and then the better you do in Secret Labs. So Secret Labs is going to be the 150 power level uh, kind of multiplayer endgame content. So that's coming out relatively soon, I believe. If you guys are familiar with Fran, which is M FM3 underscore on Twitch, um, someone from his community actually glitched into there and brought Fran in and, um, they weren't able to do anything I, in terms of like the actual mission and the mechanics, they were able to open up some chests and stuff like that, I believe. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing secret labs is going to be right around the corner. Um, so the better you do in secret labs, the easier the final boss is, which is kind of interesting. Took their QA team hours to beat, which means bring your A team. I mean, I would never, I, I won't hold stock into QA teams taking hours to beat something. I mean, obviously, I would think, like, the upper end of the community is going to be better than their QA teams. Um, just because, just the way it is. I mean, I, I, I don't think there's any disagreement on that one. So, he wants War Zones to have more diverse environments and growing mechanics. They're having internal discussions on changing the overall fundamental aspects of War Zones. Okay, that's interesting. Um, that'll be really cool to see how kind of that changes. Uh, I'm definitely okay with kind of the way war zones go now. I just want more of them. But if they do decide to kind of change them up and go in a different direc direction, I'm not against it either. So it'll be very interesting to see um, how that kind of takes shape over the next uh, few months and, you know, the first year of the game. Is Black Widow build tank utilizing dodges? Okay. 
Interesting. Excited about people playing Secret Lab. Wants to see how easy people think it is. The puzzles require communication, but it isn't super hardcore. Okay. All right. Interesting. I'm, I'm super excited for Secret Lab. I, I can't wait for it, to be honest. It should be fun. I think I have a team that should be ready to go for it. Um, maybe not. <laughs> um, there are some guys that I play with, but they're not at 150 yet. So we'll kind of see if they get there before it comes out. I might just have to tell them, like, hey, guys, like, we got content coming out. Like, you guys got to hit 150. Um, if not, I'll just have to find other people to play uh, Secret Labs with. No big deal. Um, let's see. PR man is making them say soon. I think that's probably in regards to Secret Lab. Exotic gear is a higher stat threshold, which uh, they fixed that in the patch. They're planning a roadmap, but no ETA. I think that'll probably come in the next War Table stream. Uh, I would imagine another War Table stream probably... I was even going to say the end of September, like next week, but that might be, I don't know. It, I would say like maybe the second week of October, I'd be more interested in seeing that come there. I don't know if they're going to be ready to show something next week. Um, I would expect that within the first few weeks of October, to be honest. Secret Lab has special exotic gear, only place you can, can get it. Special perks, new artifacts. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Working on new skills, new ETA or spoilers. Okay. No plans on re-rolling soon. Focusing on improvement of the overall game. Yeah. I mean, they got to focus on like the things that matter most. Like a new game plus or like re-rolling. I mean, those are cool. But like there's so many things they got to fix beforehand. I mean, it's not. This isn't a game that like totally has new game plus written all over it. Um, this is a game that's like a multiplayer looter. Grind it. Keep going. Like, you know, stuff like that. Like. And then, and then the same thing, like, unless they mean re-rolling on gear. Um, and, like, yeah, I can see re-rolling on gear need, like, needing to be soon. It totally depends on, like, what the re-rolling is as, like, out of con Like, this is, like, out of context, I guess. Um, but it totally depends on, like, where it is and, like, what they mean by this. If it's, like, New Game Plus, like, yeah, whatever. But if it's, like, gear, I would say, like, re-rolling on gear is something that we should get, like, fairly soon so um yeah exotics never tended to be worse than legendaries they fixed the stat allocation so it always better yep your level one green isn't turning exotic yeah so for some people instead of getting an exotic drop we're getting like a level one green item um which was very disheartening so this is just to confirm that those people who got that they didn't go to bed one night and then wake up in that level one green you know if they kept it which i imagine most didn't um, wasn't going to turn into like an exotic overnight. So unfortunately guys, I'm sorry about that. Um, you're probably going to have to like rerun that, uh, heroic hive and try again. So, uh, AI teams are getting updated with hack terminals and break doors. Perfect. This is a huge thing. Um, this is something that's like super huge. He would love to reply more, but he's busy working on the game. Yeah. I mean, I don't get the bio revive from CD yet where they're like totally like, radio silence like see you later like we're never going to talk about this game again um obviously like they do talk and they do reply and they do kind of make communication apparent um so if they're like if they're not responding i imagine it's because they're like so busy trying to iron out a lot of the things instead of uh you know just kind of like ditching the game by all means i don't think cd is like ditching the game at all um you know and even bioware to the extent now that like i think bioware like understood where anthem was going and like decidedly like hunkered down and started making plans for 2.0 which is why they went radio silent i don't see any of that happening with avengers obviously you know they need to fix it they need to make some make some stuff work but um you know when they when they're not replying to the community i i guarantee it's just because they're busy so um definitely understandable no hero specific perks yet okay something that could be coming in the in the future whether it's very near future or the very far future pr man is now saying he has to get approval to announce to announce a date oh that's a day for what be more what do you got um blue shield enemies never stagger burn your burn your heroics okay combat team is adjusting unblockable no eta no cosmetics earned from secret lab oh that's kind of shit yeah I mean, it totally depends on like what the drops are. If you get, if we get good drops from uh, Secret Lab in terms of like exotics and stuff, no one's really gonna be upset about cosmetics. But it all depends, man. It um, 
it totally all depends on how that goes, right? Gonna fix eating bosses, no ETA. So I guess that's like when you knock them like over the edge um, during the villain sectors for like the abomination and taskmaster in the uh, in the in the tundra. So okay, cross save between PS5 and PS4. So I would so be more is then and I guess everyone would be assuming that Xbox One to the Xbox Series X and S. So. Um, what we do need to see too, and I imagine that's coming next month is, um, what kind of improvements are we going to get for the PS5 version? So for people who have PS5s on the way and that are playing Avengers, you know, we need to see what kind of improvements we're going to get from that. Um, because, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I want to see like what, what is going to happen? You know, am I going to get 60 FPS on 1080p? Am I going to get 120 FPS on 1080p? And my, like, you know, the game is, is going to be one of those games that is going to be touted as like PS5 ready or next gen ready. Um, if you're getting an Xbox, like, what are we going to get for that? Right. So hopefully it's something cool, man. Hopefully, um, there's a lot of cool things coming, especially low times on the PS4 version right now suck. So any sort of, um, improvement to load times is going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, man. Um, super excited for that. So yeah, cross save. I mean, we all kind of knew and figured that. Um, more factions on the way, which is good. No plans to play as villain, but likes the idea. Ah, I don't care for that. I'm playing an Avengers game. I'm not playing a Thunderbolts game or a Dark Avengers game. I'm, I'm not playing a Hydra game or an AIM game. I'm playing an Avengers game. Just, you know, unless they're bringing in like a storyline where a villain is like redeemed somehow, some way, maybe. But I'm playing an Avengers game. Let's just keep it simple. Let's just keep it simple. Um, several hundred of heroes to choose from. Keep giving them your ideas. Yep, they have every single Marvel hero um, to pick. And like and like I said, usually the way these things work, um, if I remember correctly from my days playing Marvel heroes, the way these things work is everything from story to characters to costumes. Um, they all have to get the rubber stamp of approval from Marvel. Um, so theoretically could Wolverine come in this game? Yeah, of course they just have to convince Marvel of the reason that Wolverine's coming in and like the benefit to it and like the story and out around it. And, um, they could totally bring in the X-Men at some point, whether it's next year or the year after it just, they have to convince Marvel that this is the move, this is the play. Um, and this is the story behind it. Here's the benefits behind it. So I would say if, if you're looking for X-Men guys, like, fire off those you know x-men suggestions like it theoretically could happen and um you know i'm, I'm super excited for like some characters obviously we're gonna get tie-ins for the movies we're gonna get tie-ins for the shows um obviously like falcon winter soldier would be pretty cool black knight from the eternals movie is gonna be pretty cool i imagine he might be a character down the line but then you'll get like your vision your doctor strange probably a scarlet witch um you know you'll you'll get the guys you've been seeing in the movies and the comics for years and years and years um but like maybe a hercules would be kind of cool um there's so many ones that you could, could you could do man um obviously like black panther's coming like namor would be kind of cool um god there's so many man of course ant-man and the wasp like there's so many there's so many so I'll, all i will say guys is um like like be more said in the post keep giving them your ideas keep giving them your suggestions um because you never know who's around the corner you never know you know who thought k bishop was gonna be the first hero release for the game you know no one no one did right um but you know they love to surprise us right so um yeah guys so once again this is gonna be a kind of a shorter video uh, this is gonna be just kind of taking it easy today and not really getting into it um i'm still kind of not feeling well i don't know what i'm gonna do with my streams or like what's going on with that i'm just gonna try and take it easy if i feel like streaming then i'm gonna stream um so with that being said guys if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe to it um if you want to follow me on twitter it is high really tv if you want to follow the podcast on twitter it's assemble cast um and uh, i will see you guys later this week for a more than likely a blog post and uh, cross your fingers, another patch to help some people out. And then if not, if you're if you're a Spotify listener, if you're an iTunes listener, and you only listen to the main main episodes of the podcast, I will be seeing and talking to you guys next week. 
And uh, you guys stay safe. Everyone stay safe. And uh, I will see you guys later on. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, peace out. See you next time.